All right, guys, welcome back to another podcast. Um, this week, we're going to be tackling how we create accountability, but even in our ability to create accountability, uh, this is going to be another several multi-part series. I mean, right now, we're working on solutions. Um, obviously, leading up to this point, um, we've kind of gone through our core values and defining and uh, assigning accountability, um, but this is really more of the hands-on tool for uh, sort of creating accountability, it's sort of like bringing everything together um, into a couple of core processes. It's not really conceptual. Um, it is more uh, sort of hard and hard and uh, fact process. Um, but um, anyway, stay tuned. And uh, here we go. Welcome to the podcast. The most critical of all four core values. Yes. Accountability. Yes. We're yes. now on session three of talking about accountability. You know, what it, what uh, what is accountability? Um, how are we assigning it? And now it, it, we previewed it a little bit last week. Yeah. yeah. How do we create it? Because, the, like, I don't know if anybody really has, uh, and, and as a general rule, uh, a lack of understanding, especially when given the tools, like, how do I define accountability? Yeah. I give them the tools like, yeah. oh, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I lay out the assigning accountability. It's like, yep, those three yeah. correlating pieces or six correlating pieces really, mm -hmm. like I see that behaviorally. It's very tangible. Yeah. I can understand my place in it for the most part. Yep. That's great. I can identify it, and now I can point it out when people are doing that, but now what? Yeah, what do we do How about do I it? fix it? How do I get to uh, own it? How do I get to solutions and how do I get to implement? All we've really done is set the stage for point number five in our accountability definition. Now we're moving up. Yeah. And actually even just like really squaring away number five also. Yeah. So we have, and again, we, we, tweet, we talked about it a little bit last week, where we have our, uh, our chief clinical officer role, our senior accountability officer role, both of those being titles that basically say these two individuals are specifically de uh, designated to create accountability within the organization. And not they're not just the ones that are rolling around with the two by four, hitting people in the head, like, hey, you suck at your job, get right. better. Yeah. What we did was we said, okay, we know that we have these two individuals and we know that we need constant uh, processes uh, to create accountability. What do those processes look like? And that's when we get into our two, our case review process and our after action review process. And I'll let yeah. you kind of kick off with the case review process, what that means, generally yeah. how we use it uh, and what its value really has been for our organization. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, again, saying that these are pretty hard and fast tools is a probably pretty appropriate way to look at them because um, this is where we start to take the writing off the wall and we start to put it into a clinical setting. Yeah. Because I feel like if you know anyone who takes um, you know our defining accountability PDF and our assigning accountability PDF I think you can probably come up with a half a dozen different ways of how you would utilize that in your clinic you know and I think what we're um, moving towards obviously and what we have is these the case review the after action report and ultimately the forgiveness model um, these are really kind of core administrative processes that you hope you never have to use Yes. I and don't want accountability. No, no. I don't ever want to have to go there. I just want people to do their job. Correct. Correct. And I think when you have ground floor administration, and it's when you, if you guys look at our um, creating accountability diagram, you know, we sort of have this kind of like traditional, you know, quote unquote, middle management type role, which I don't really think of it that way. I just think of when we start to look at like an associate vet to a medical generalist or a caregiver support to the office generalist and tech leads and so on and so forth. Um, simply, these are people who understand accountability, who understand mm -hmm. core values, and it's really Really their intent not necessarily to manage anybody mm -hmm. um, but really what it is is just to help other people understand core values and how in a day-to-day -day process how those um, basically uh, function within the team and how to do it right and hopefully not to do it wrong um, and that's where again then coming into this uh, creating accountability which you know uh, we start to look at how um, you know the the case review process works is again the case review um, really when you look at it I mean I guess technically between 
another word for case review, I guess, would technically be like a patient accountability process. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, patient advocacy, patient accountability, it's really just a process whereby, um, you know, we can ob objectively go through an interaction with an individual and point out a loss of core value, or we point out maybe their own uh, reality in this particular um, area of conflict. Um, and, you know, that's, I guess, when we kind of start to talk about these as tools, like proper conflict resolution um, sort of ablates the cultural opportunity for vindictive behavior. You know, so when we have sort of like an appropriate way that we deal with conflict in the team, we don't necessarily have to go through case reviews. We don't necessarily have to do after action reports. But again, coming back to assigning accountability and defining accountability, this is really, I feel like, how... We, we have this as a, to, a resource to always use, but because our team has growing accountability and a high level of accountability, I mean, I feel like we use this a lot more like a year and a half ago, maybe. Yeah, because you know? what these tools do and what the the roles of chief clinical officer, senior accountability officer are meant to do is, is to generate uh, a, a way of thinking, a yep. talk path, yep. how do we communicate, what are we saying, because we just, we roll backwards, you know, we, we go from creating accountability to, okay, now that we know how to speak in a specific way, now we can point out when we have our yeah. specific drama roles, yeah. and then ultimately we can start to just speak accountability. Yeah. We don't have to go through the specific processes so yeah. much anymore because we've already done it. We yeah. know how to say this. Yeah. It can move much quicker. Yeah. Because but, we're teaching it. Yeah, exactly. Teaching we, the pieces, that's, teaching that's the what, tools. That's what these roles and these tools do. Is It's the it's same as what we do with caregivers. We yeah. just educate. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's exactly that. It's cultural education, yeah. you know, almost exclusively. And I think, you know, we start to look at case reviews and the after action report and so on and so forth. Um, you know, again, just to kind of read what we said in the last video is, you know, the case review is really a tool to identify those opportunities for growth within the, indi with, within the individual and sometimes the team. But a lot of times case reviews are kind of driven more towards a, a particular problem, you know, mm -hmm. or a particular conflict in that regard. Mm -hmm. um, but when we start to think about how, you know, we have problems come up in the work environment and, and, and of course our setting a clinical environment sometimes those problems come up when it's you know it's like see something say something you know where it's just like oh i saw this person give the wrong dose i saw this person not label a drug you know i saw um you know they talk to a caregiver in this capacity and i think when we start to look at how we're creating accountability and you start to look at case reviews or you start to look at a reactive process um this is significantly different than finger pointing and this is significantly different than tattling. Yeah. And I think that's how when you improperly um, impl or, uh, uh, establish accountability in your workplace and you define it and you assign it, is that what'll start to, what, what if done incorrectly, you'll have a lot of people who just think you're going around blaming and tattling, mm -hmm. um, which is not the case. No, no, and it's again because we're creating opportunities for growth. And if you look back to assigning accountability, remember is we're trying to stop this victim rescuer persecutor role. Mm -hmm. If you have a team where no one is the victim persecutor or rescuer, you don't actually have blame. You don't have the opportunity right. to you know point fingers and say this person is tattling. Well, someone's like they're tattling on me. You're victimizing yourself by thinking they're tattling on you. Like this has nothing to do with you know you know and one it's not a hierarchy. So if you have have an organization that is not a hierarchy there is no tattling because there is no parental figure mm -hmm. there is no one above you to whom you are being tattled right. you know in a, in, a, in a lack of hierarchy organization and you're looking more into sort of this creator coach and challenger role we start to talk about this case review process um it's no longer about tattling as no. we have uh, it's kind of like we said before is that using these tools having accountability and more importantly core values um is that we have this sort of like we said talk path, um, but we have this guide in decision making. We have this guide and process. And like you said, we're teaching the caregivers how to care for their patients. Mm -hmm. um, we're teaching staff and employees how to care for the work environment. Mm -hmm. And ultimately what we're doing is creating a process by which we serve the patient, right. um, which is vastly different than what we kind of joked about earlier is our, our core value you know, is not care for the patient. Yeah. It is serve the patient, yeah. you know, and that's where um, when you start to look at moving through case reviews, um, this is typically typically a really, really good opportunity to make or break the clinic, mm -hmm. make or break clinic culture mm -hmm. is if you have a case review go poorly because you handled it inappropriately, it's going to completely throw out everything else you were trying to do. Right. Um, and so kind of the way that we have broke this down um, and 
is basically whenever there's a problem, so, um, and it doesn't matter if that issue, now again, most of these problems in a clinic setting is going to be somehow more medical related. Mm -hmm. So we are still given the opportunity um, to have issues with our caregiver support staff if there was, um, you know, say an issue with uh, communication and how an appointment was scheduled, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we also have opportunities for within our medical support staff and saying the estimate process was not handled appropriately. Um, you know, I think one of the uh, ones I just heard about today was um, how we do our estimate transfer. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, when those kind of things start to fall out of line according to process, it becomes what it's inefficiency of process and unnecessary conflict. Right. You know, so when we start to talk about these case reviews, again, most of our examples are probably going to come from one way or another, how it's related to a medical patient. Um, or at least medical care for that matter. Um, but again, it should all come back to our serving of the patient. And that, of course, is the entire organization between, you know, estimate generation and invoicing and, you know, communications and uh, medical records and all those different types of things. But what we have um, is basically in this case review process, we have a reactive process and we have a proactive process. Mm -hmm. So we kind of looked at all the different ways that we get, you know, have conflict or we have problems or ultimately we end up generating complaints. And, um, um, basically, the reactive process is almost exclusively following some type of caregiver complaint. Right. Um, so it's, uh, you know, they were uh, they, basically when um, case management um, yields an undesirable outcome. So mm -hmm. whether that undesirable outcome was this was more expensive than I thought it was going to be. Um, undesirable outcome is, oh, I thought that this was actually going to heal. This wound was going to heal the first time we did surgery. I didn't understand that infection was a possibility. Mm -hmm. So as you kind of start to move through this, it's basically, again, the reactive process is basically a caregiver complaint driven process. Um, however, there is the opportunity, of course, in a reactive scenario on culture, when you have basically conflict between two employees, mm -hmm. um, and now you have one 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 employee or one coworker um, sort of complaining about the other one or right. somehow victimizing themselves or staying in that drama world. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times, what that one uh, translates to is somebody drags their shit in, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. then it impacts everybody else. Sure. So the case review being again that that individualized process, what the 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 generation of that reactive review mm -hmm. in that case would be. A staff member coming to ad, ad, the senior accountability officer or whoever is in the administrative role and saying, like, this person was just in a shit mood all day yeah. and just laid it on everybody. Yeah. Like, I, I'm not blaming them. I understand right. that there's something else going on. Sure. I don't know what that thing is, and I didn't want to approach it because yeah. I just wanted to make sure this was held, you know, that was done appropriately. Yeah. But there was a problem. Yeah can you go through this process yeah. to gather more information so yeah. that we can grow? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and in, in that particular setting where it's, it, like you said, it is more reactive to this individual dragging their shit in, you know, mm -hmm. our sort of proactive process is pretty much what we've been saying. And through most of our podcasts is, you know, quote unquote, check your shit at the door. Right. You know, is we're here for a common goal. So, you know, the proactive process is kind of before you get to the complaint part. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of then the other side of the proactive process where, you know, we'll have um, you know, some of our doctors, they might send me, oh, this medical record wasn't as complete as it should be or, you know, something in that capacity. Um, but the proactive process then is, um, you know, basically following feedback from any team member. Um, and it's typically when case management, again, yields an undesirable outcome. Mm -hmm. um, but that proactive process is you're basically staying ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. So it's there hasn't really yet been a problem just yet. And if you guys kind of jump back to the defining accountability PDF, um, you know, is that the proactive process gives it's everyone out of number four. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, you know, you have a team member where they're like, oh, I just kind of saw something happen uh, with this patient. Mm -hmm. I just kind of saw something happen with this caregiver. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, boom, you jump out of sort of this weight and you're like, oh, reality up, oh, own it. Um, I'm not really sure what the solution is. However, I know that from a proactive process, I can jump to the senior accountability officer, sometimes the uh, chief clinical officer, but chief clinical officer is just a very, very distant role for um, most of our case reviews. Um, 
but what that kind of then starts to, to um, uh, sort of balance off of in this proactive process, um, and I guess even reactive process in that capacity, mm -hmm. is we start to pull those other sort of team leads into the picture, right. you know, to say, was this an issue? Was it not an issue? Did someone just actually see something wrong, um, you know, um, in saying, you know, in, in some, some capacity? Um, but, I, but, the, but the process ultimately at that point, reactive, proactive, these aren't again these aren't tattletaling these aren't yeah. blaming what it is is the the first step in both of these is fact finding absolutely let's lay out the entire picture yes with the case review process being an individualized picture let's say that is a reactive process on a medical issue yep. you say okay on one side caregiver has issued a complaint yep. regarding x case details believing whatever happened and yep. this is their full side of the story correct any organization that would go off of that as the ultimate truth is doing a horrible disservice to their staff absolutely and also ultimately to the next patient that comes in the door with maybe a similar issue yeah so then on the other side we say okay we're going to take all that information and now we're going to take your written medical record Right. as well as your take on this case and we're going to put it all together yep. and on a one-to-one -one basis we're going to review this case right yep we're yep. going to say this is the problem i have one side of the uh definition of this problem i'm now going to acquire the full definition of the problem to essentially get to the root cause of the problem yep. so we can acknowledge whatever the problem whatever the reality is own whatever side you know, and and sometimes that works both ways. Like, especially in the case review on the medical side, that's not always us just biting the bullet and saying, yeah. "Caregiver, you're right." Right. I mean, that actually doesn't happen terribly often because yeah. we tend to do our job pretty well. Yeah. But when it does happen, yeah. it gives us the opportunity to put together thorough judgments. Yeah. And say yes, this is accurate, yeah. this part isn't, whatever it might be, yeah. and now we're going to address that accordingly. Yeah. But again, individualized because, yeah. again, most of the time it's it's somebody saying something crappy about a doctor or a tech. Yeah, 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 yeah. Most of the time, yes. I, I think we can, you know, kind of bring out these other examples of ways yeah. in which the team may, you know, sort of have a case review. But you're exactly right. A lot of this is when you feel that when you feel the complaint from, right. from a caregiver. Yeah, and you know how we kind of put together and assemble our case review process um, is exactly as if. In, and this is just a complaint. Like it's like, oh, uh, you know, um, uh, about this medication. I think this was too much. You know, my vet said this was the wrong antibiotic to use, mm -hmm. or I read on the internet that this was this, and now your organization is at fault of my animal not getting better because I didn't get the right antibiotic. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, I mean, that's clearly, you know, or yeah. a surgical incision became infected. Yeah, surgical. Yep. And and so what mm -hmm. we then look at with these is we approach all of our case reviews um, as if those cases are going before state review so it's mm -hmm. going to go to the state board of mm -hmm. licensure um, or it's going to go under legal review mm -hmm. so some people may consider that to be overboard but if you look at it as if you are not in the organization and i think one of the things we had said in one of our previous podcasts was that um we are not in the business of reputation management i mean right. yes our pr and marketing people are um, yeah. but that's different though yeah, yeah. So when we look at... Um, it's just a weed whacker. It's yeah, fine. I know. It's kind of what that sounds like. Um, <laughs> so when we when we look at um, the... the, It's just going to happen. We're just going to talk through it. I know. We're just going to have dumb. to power through it. It's really good. <laughs> it's going to get really distracting. Yeah, it's super distracting. <laughs> so when, when you look at this objectively, um, and actually I think now our case reviews, I think we gave ourselves like a seven to 10 day window prior just because, you know, for mm -hmm. us to kind of assemble all the pieces. But now I think that most of our case reviews are down to just a couple of days. Yeah. Um, but when we look at um, taking that objective approach mm -hmm. is it's blunt honesty. Yeah. And I think when we start to look at the reactive process and saying, well, there's blame and there's this and this and this, and you know, there's forgiveness and yada, yada, yada. Um, I think in, in the end, t handling it internally at that level of, you know, sort of critique and, mm -hmm. you know, objectivity, um, it does so many different things. You know, one, if you ever have anything go before state board, it's like, oh, we've already tried to deal with this. Right. And, you know, let, let's, um, you know, use the example of, um, you know, improper dose sent, right? Um, nope. 
that, yeah, didn't, that help. didn't help. Um, you know, improper dose of medication sense. So yeah. someone missed a decimal or, you know, something yep. in that capacity. So um, we actually, uh, actually to that end, uh, we had that example here uh, within the last month or two or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, and it was, it was an antibiotic, it was amoxicillin. So a decimal place was missed, um, a, a larger dose was sent. Um, so when it was like, oh, I've got this complaint, mm -hmm. uh, improper dose of medication sent, I was like, okay, let's then run through this process. So for us, we have a very, very pure um, medical record process. So for mm -hmm. us, we look at informed consent and we look at, we have our dosing sheets and we have highlights and we have double checks for all of our medications and you know we all discharges, all these things work seamlessly mm -hmm. so that administratively we can always look back and we say, well, the, the wrong medication was sent home, but why? Was it that the veterinarian calculated it wrong? Was it that the, per, the, um, the calculation was right, but the um, order was written incorrectly? Mm -hmm. Or if the order was written correctly, who was responsible for filling that medication? And if it was written correctly, but filled wrong, there was actually two people who missed the fill right. because we have double checks and the bottles are sitting right there when we double check our meds and double check our labels to the written order. So as we kind of move backwards on this, it's like, okay, wrong thing was sent home. We can track back into saying, yep, 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 yep. Okay, it was a simple error in calculation. Decimal was missed. Here's what it is. So we then take it forward and saying, okay, mm -hmm. well, there is a problem here. This mm -hmm. is not reputation management. This is a process that's going to allow us to, to sort of reactively do the best thing that we can do for this patient. So then objectively, it was, we went into um, our uh, pharmaceutical book, Plum, to say, okay, what are the adverse reactions? What are the overdoses? Um, then jumped into the manufacturer literature from that particular medication, what's listed for uh, adverse reactions and overdoses. Mm -hmm. And then we also approached animal poison control to then get their third party outside opinion mm -hmm. on saying, well, what, 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 what are we at, at risk for here with right. this patient? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily, you know, what did we do wrong? We knew a decimal was missed, but how does that actually impact the life of this particular patient? And it basically came through from the book, nothing from the, manufacturer literature, nothing. For animal poison control, nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and the caregiver had gone online and found out, oh, well, there's some concern of you know kidney involvement and so on and so forth. Um, so in the amount of time, it was from when the patient left our hospital to then the couple of times it rechecked through its vet, it had um, rechecked blood work done um, mm -hmm. you know, to make sure everything was fine. So um, the caregiver had approached us and saying, I want all of my money back for everything because of this one miscalculation. I think the bill was, I don't know, it was only like, like 400 bucks or 500 bucks or something. I didn't yeah. think it was that much. Yeah, it might not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's like, you know, otherwise, uh, oh, you know, this is, this is what I want back. So looking through it and going through all of this it is like, well, um, there actually weren't any damages associated with this miscalculation. Like, I, I agree with you, um, that it was a mistake mm -hmm. and we're all humans and right. these things happen, right. you know, and, um, the individuals responsible for this have been addressed and, you know, we've acknowledged that it's a problem, but mm -hmm. when you see 6,000 patients a year and, you know, there's just a lot of opportunity for a 1% or 0.5% or an 0.1% right. error, like it's just right. going to happen. I mean, we, we, we would call that an oh shit moment. <laughs> right. It's like, oh shit. Right. So, uh, you know, but part of that then is kind of rooted in forgiveness, which we'll kind of talk about a little bit later yep. on. Yep. Um, you know, but with that process and saying, well, there actually aren't any damages, but we understand that because of your concern, mm -hmm. you had some additional blood work done. We, we didn't know that you had additional blood work done. If you had told us, we would have just run it for free. So right. we'll actually pay you for the blood work that was done. We'll mm -hmm. refund the um, medication that was dispensed to you because obviously you can't use it because right. it, was, it was dispensed it, inaccurately. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was it's dispensed inaccurately. Unusual. Right. Yep. Um, and it was basically like, no, that's not good enough. Yeah. I want all of my money back. Mm -hmm. So this is now where I went through that whole example mm -hmm. to then come to this exact point. Mm -hmm. It's where do you go as a business owner? Yeah. You know, do you say, we just went through this whole process. I think we put, I don't know, between animal poison control, calling the referring veterinarian, getting records, records reviews, talking to our veterinarian, staff on hand. We probably put about four to six hours yeah. into most, e each complaint. I think that probably sounds asinine, but we usually on average put about four to six hours into most of our complaints mm -hmm. to hunt down each of these individual processes mm -hmm. and find out essentially where the problem lies. Right. And and then saying, okay, well, objectively, this is what we came to. There are there are zero damages here. That nothing actually happened to your patient as a result. But we understand additional expense was accrued, mm -hmm. so we would be happy to compensate you for that. And this is then the split between objective threshold and subjective threshold. Yeah, you know, is sort of that objective side is well, this is what it is. But subjectively, I'm still going to be mad at you, right? Unless you give me what I want. Mm -hmm. 
no, you're still going to be mad at us even when you get what you want. Right. You know, and I think that's then as a clinic owner or some, you know, chief clinical officer, or senior accountability officer, it's basically doing right by the patient and mm -hmm. it's doing right by uh, it's the principle. Right. And I think that's, I kind of make the joke is that I'll go to the grave for principle, you know, and, you know, cause again, you know, what is it is how many times are we going to roll over as a profession? Cause this, this expands out further than just us sending home yeah. the wrong medication. Yep. Right. This, this, this it balloons out into us just constantly being rollovers when someone complains mm -hmm. and not standing up for ourselves and saying, no, when your patient came in, you, the diagnostics we performed, you needed. And your patient did receive this diagnosis. And there were three other medications sent home that were needed. And mm -hmm. it was this one mistake. And this one mistake is going to be refunded to you. And the expense after that is something we want to compensate. But as soon as you say, you know what, I'm going to give you money back for these other things that were necessary is you completely devalue everything else that was done in that process right. you are willing to accept that because usually when you get complaints it's not just one right mm -hmm. it's like oh you sent home the wrong medication but you know what i waited too long and you know what the bathroom wasn't clean and you know what that person up front they weren't just as friendly as i'd like and you know there were 37 people there and you know so when you get these complaints is that a lot of times they just keep firing off and 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 telling you how worthless you are and then it's just like you know what if i it's only 400 bucks if I pay these people off, they're just going to go away and I, I never have to deal with them again. Right. So if you want to do that, though, is it undermines the entire process. Mm -hmm. It undermines every other part of accountability as we just objectively went at this. And for us as a part of it is um, anytime we get a complaint, we put together um, our case review. I send it to our malpractice insurance as I'm just like, this is a case that came through. I'm letting you know just here's the record, just sit on it. If we get sued, it's going to be right there. You already have it, maintaining mm -hmm. complete transparency. Right. Um, and our malpractice insurance, you know, they usually come back and they're like, this process is amazing. Yeah. They're like, you guys are incredibly thorough at, and I'm like, well, why wouldn't I be? Right. You know, because right. I want to serve the patient here. If mm -hmm. we did something wrong by this animal or this patient, yeah. I want to be able to fix that process. You want to be able to own it, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. Right. That's what it really comes down to is like yeah. all of the, you, know, you alluded to all of these things that we have in place for like just yeah. every single case gets a yep. green sheet, a blue, a, yep. blue, a yep. green sheet, a blue sheet, a yellow sheet, a yep. pink sheet, pink sheet. Yep. and as well as a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Yep. So we do that every single time. Yep. We have all of these double check processes and yep. absolutely we will not be 100% accurate no. every single time it's, Won't happen. it's not possible no. No. so but we have all of these all for the sake right. of setting ourselves up to own problems when they exist absolutely it's not a way i, I always make the joke of like covering our butt yeah but that's not really what it is yeah. it's if a problem exists i need to fix it yeah I need to implement an effective solution to make this problem go away because right. ultimately I do want to get one to 100%. Oh, absolutely. Constantly yeah. striving to fulfill yeah. our core values right. 100%. Yes, absolutely. We acknowledge that that's not going to happen, but yeah. we're going to push every day to get there. We're going to be driven by that process. So you're absolutely right, though, and I had that conversation with that caregiver and on, yes. the, on the back yeah. end where that's it, right. like she was, you know, she was – you know, a little upset yeah, about not getting her way. Yeah. Oh, well, so that's, <laughs> yes, yes. So yeah, let, let's lead into that point, right? Yeah. So we put together this case judgment. The case yeah. judgment is typed up, letterhead, yep. mailed to them to say, mm -hmm. this is what we came upon. Or, and I, we lay out every single one of those points, <clears throat> poison control, all yep. this and all this and all this, and here's what we found. Right. And then again, coincidentally, you, I, yeah. I forgot you were, yeah, that was you were working the front end that day. So I yeah. got to own that one. Yeah. So yeah. So take it from there. So yeah. what we'll do is we'll actually walk you guys through that whole scenario and how it ended. Right. Right. So um, we we stated our case of, of everything in terms of our advocacy judgment yep. off, offered uh, the, um, you know, the, the refund for yeah, the yeah. For, for everything yeah, that was yeah. appropriate yep. uh, to to the case and, and to not discount our doctor's value, Correct. the value of the services that were provided, yep. because, again, a diagnosis was was yep. concluded. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and it was necessary for the presenting complaint. And right. Like yep. we did our job. We yep. just made made like An literally error. a decimal point error yeah. at the end of the visit yeah. and so it's like okay we acknowledge that that decimal point error existed yeah, yeah. here's everything in terms yeah. of damages yeah. for that it was that we solution. will refund yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. laid out the solution mailed it to her calls back and is like i want a refund for the whole thing like well, I number one, I yeah. as a as a caregiver support staff am not cannot make that call right, right however right. 
like this is what it is. Yeah. Like we've gone through the entire process, and right. and, and like like I mean, like you can either say yes or you can say no, and I'm right. I'm simply going to report that information. Yes, right. I'm either accepting or I'm not. Right. And she's like, and she and she never said yes, and she never said no in the entire conversation. I, I shouldn't say that till the she very did end. Decline. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah technically. Though. At the very, but it was probably a 15 minute conversation of like, well, if you don't give me what I want, I'm gonna shit all over you all over social media. I work for one of the biggest employers in the county and I'm going to tear you apart. Right. I'm like, well, I would wish you didn't do that because right. I feel like we've done a thorough process here, but this is what I can offer you right. as my role. Do you accept it or do you not? Again, just going to the process right. that we had clearly laid out. In yeah, because I'll type in the medical record. Just like, this is what this is all you have to say. So right. if I hadn't received that call, one of our other caregiver yeah. support staff had, they're not going to cave on it and say, well, we'll give you everything. Right, right. It's like, nope, this is what it is. Yeah, yes or no. Right. And she just blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It's just a constant <laughs> devalue, right? So the yeah. blah, 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 blah is just, you guys are trash. Yes. Give me what I want. Yeah. And then when the threats start to come through social media, yeah. you know, all those. Well, and that was the funny part. Of, like, the, that, the, now that you say that, like, the original part of the conversation was like, well, how does this mistake happen? And my response was, because mistakes happen. Right. Do you accept this or do you not? Like, right. I just, just the right. snap one. Like, yeah. well, if you, and then it just, again, it just accelerated yeah. into, I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to try and tear you apart. Yes. And yeah. I, yeah. again, I, yeah. I, you have the right, right. to do so, ma'am. Right. right. But right. do you accept this? No, I don't accept this. Great. Have a good day. Right. Click. Right. right. And then it's, and then after that, because the thing is, is like, I mean, it, there are times in which, and this was part of the response letter that that we wrote yes. back. So mm-hmm. when we send a judgment, uh, you know, is that, uh, you know, sometimes it's hard and fast, sometimes it is. Because sometimes we'll just say, you know, we'll give some leeway in this case, you know, for negotiation or some point in that. Yes. Um, but I think where it really kind of turned was like where it's, you know, here, you know, as a CSS, here's mm-hmm. what I have to offer. Do you accept or not? And it's just trash talk, trash talk. And now I'm going to somehow um, devalue or continue to devalue organizations organization so through social media mm-hmm. um you know I'm, I'm gonna sue you i'm gonna do these different it's things. all threats it's all threats essentially mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. um is that's where it stops yes so for us is it this is where we're talking about kind of the when you talk about a complaint there's the objective side and there's the subjective side objective side, is that where are we going to cave and mm-hmm. where are we ultimately going to give in to this person because as soon as they start to devalue you and you're trash and this and this and this and this and then you just cave in and and because of all of these things i want you to do this and then you do that you just agreed to all of that right i am all of these things that they just said mm-hmm. and the reality is no we are none of those things that they said it's that we are human and a mistake was made um and so my response letter back to this individual was um you know essentially i'm sorry that we could not arrive at a compromise mm-hmm. but since you chose to renegotiate or attempted negotiation with this through threats and social action we are no longer able to discuss this objectively and that was the end of it right this individual got nothing nothing and it was not because we were unwilling to maybe give a little bit here or there on what that judgment was but the reality was there just wasn't anything else to say Mm -hmm. it was a mistake we owned it we determined the damages which was none but we were offered additional because there was concern right that was the leeway right right (laughs) Right? yeah yeah. like we offered to pay for the blood testing after like that's the leeway right yeah probably right yeah we had already kind of reading we had negotiated with ourselves and saying there was no damages but it's like oh well here you go yeah um and we because uh, the the other side of that is her decision to go to another vet yes to express those concerns yep and solidify that those concerns had not uh, been realized. Yeah. I respect that. Right. Absolutely. Like, awesome. Get a Thank, second opinion. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Not a problem yeah. whatsoever with that. And and yeah. that was why the, yeah. the 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 olive branch was put out there of yeah. I will cut I yeah. will cover that. Yeah, absolutely. But everything else was completely right. unrelated. Right. Because for us it was it was that it was everything stemming off of that problem. And right. we were continuing to focus on owning that problem and determining the solutions for that problem, but had nothing to do with all of the other things that we had done well. Mm-hmm. And not like you said, and not devaluing that. And and so yeah. part of that process of course is you know before we hand out our judgments or send them or you know call these caregivers or whatever is we always communicate back with like you know say the normal veterinarian or area veterinarian you know again Mm -hmm. just to continue to get their input on some of these processes you know and saying hey do you think we did wrong by this patient yeah you know because that's another kind of common point where it's like this vet said you guys were blah 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 and my vet said this and you guys were done it's like 
All right, cool. I'm going to call them. Call them up and say, did you say all that? Oh, no, I didn't say anything like that. Okay. <laughs> you know? <laughs> all right. Well, yeah, you know, right. uh, there is a miscommunication here. And I think that's what a lot of times when we start to have conflicting stories coming from the caregiver, from the referring veterinarian or whatever happens to be, um, is... Uh, there is a miscommunication, yeah. you know? So I think if there's a lot of gray areas and some of these judgments on miscommunication, I think that's again, where there's a little bit of leeway, but this particular example was so black and white on a yeah. missed decimal, there was no opportunity for miscommunication. Everything was done with perfection up to that point. So when I had um, approached uh, our veterinarian about this one particular problem, it was that exact point, mm -hmm. you know, is it's like, yeah, that sucks. I, you know, I'm sorry. And obviously we're going to be working to not have this. And I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, obviously from our forgiveness model, of course there's forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, mm -hmm. even if it turned out that, um, you know, this was something more significant, more catastrophic for this patient that ended up costing our more, our organization more, more money, more problems, you know, whatever that happens to be, mm -hmm. that still doesn't mean that there would be a lack of forgiveness for the staff, the right. lack of forgiveness for the veterinarian. Right. Um, and that's again, kind of getting through what our creating accountability process is like our veterinarian knew. And, and I said, you know, I said to him, you know, as I said, uh, I said, you know, I, I really got to hand it to you, our, our veterinarian. I said, I really got to hand it to you. I said, you know, miscalculation and kind of getting a complaint and stuff like this. I'm like, I'm like, you handle it like a champ. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, there was like almost no anxiety about this. I'm like, you know, and what I was saying, you know, I was like, you know, I'm like that, you know, that really makes me feel good because you know that no matter what, we're here for the same purpose. We're right. here to save the patient. And he's like, oh no, I had terrible anxiety the whole time. You know, <laughs> I just held it together yeah, really well. I just well. held it together really well. Um, but let's let's kind of take that one step further, right? So we have someone who's hiding it very well and they're just, you know, they're like, oh shit, you know, I missed a yeah. decimal, like what's gonna happen? Right. You know, and moving through this process is, you know, this being an example and saying, nope, you know, we acknowledge that there was a problem. We own the problem. We had a solution. We were more than willing to implement it. Mm -hmm. The person chose to continue to victimize themselves even though there was <clears throat> really at that point no additional persecutor um, the mm -hmm. caregiver was continuing to victimize themselves and I wasn't allowing our organization to be the rescuer right you know it was it was like you know so anyway um it's a so, great way of putting it. Yeah, right. I know. It, 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 right. In that it, role. It clicked. You yeah. just hit it. Like, yeah. Yep. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. 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 But since she stayed in the victim role and you yeah. didn't cave, now you're persecutor. Yes. Yes. Which makes you the bad guy. Yeah. So I stayed in the coach role, you know, right. from, from, from this dynamic where the caregiver remained the victim, but I was the coach to just say, hey, come yeah. up here. Here's the solution. Yeah. Um, so then to come back to our veterinarian, you know, and that was a perfect opportunity for us to create accountability mm -hmm. without destroying culture. Right. You know, because it's like, you know, you go back and say, oh, yeah, we had to give her all of her money back because of your fuck up and that cost me this much money. And mm -hmm. it's just like, well, that wouldn't be the appropriate way to handle it. Mm -hmm. However, even if it was something that cost a large amount of money is it's like, you know what, I'm glad that we were still able to do right by the patient. Mm -hmm. I'm still glad we were able to, you know, at least in some capacity, you know, uh, learn from this mistake or, you know, and that's what practice is. So when we get back to what the main problems are in our profession of this lack of self-worth, mm -hmm. and now we have something where we get a complaint, like we are now saying that we have a creating accountability case review process that actually allows us to build our confidence and right. saying, yep, a mistake was made, but oh, look at all all of these different parts and I have all these different people involved and it's like, yep, a mistake was made. Um, we had a very reasonable way to create a solution and implement it with this particular caregiver. Right. But it's kind of like we said before, when we're working on culture internally, you can only spoon feed so much. Yeah. You know, and I think our, I think our judgment was two pages long. I think it was two it's full two, two full pages single spaced on the whole yeah. objective process mm -hmm. on everything that we went through and that still wasn't good enough. It's not gonna, it's never going to be good enough. Right. But again to go with all and i guess not but's not the right word and to go along with all of that the reason that we can have that forgiveness model mm -hmm. is because everything else that exists in terms of processes paperwork medical records you have the form and function in place yeah. to do this process effectively yeah so you know when we talk about some of these solutions and absolutely this is one of the absolute best ways to combat that loss of self-worth because we just edified the shit out of our veterinarian Absolutely. saying, I 100% believe that this mistake will never happen ever again. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to think so. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and what, if it does it get like, we're going right. to talk we'll about some different, then. some solutions, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. If it becomes a perpetual problem, uh, maybe different. you yeah. can't <laughs> do your job all that well. Yeah. Then you start to talk about alphabarding, yeah. whatever. Yeah. 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 But, we're, but even then, it's like, how can we continue to support? Do we need more staff? Do we need more right. this? Were you stressed What's out missing? that day? Right. How do yeah. we solve this problem? Yeah. Because if you have a perpetual issue with decimal places, right. we just put in a solution. We're correct. 
Um, but we edify him, bringing his self worth up. Exactly. And but all of these processes and the idea that we're not just going to take the caregiver's word for it, yeah. and then just slam our vet, yeah. and not even give him the opportunity to be like, "Hey, what about my side?" Right. And that's that. I yeah. that misuse of the idea of like the customer is always right. I was just going to say, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. And that that concept, although I appreciate it in print in like principle where it's like you want to do everything you can to yeah. you know feed the needs of whatever whatever yeah, your consumer yeah. is yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're no, not no. always right no 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 and in this case they were not i mean they were they were right in their actions to go and get the recheck correct yes and yep. we understood the value of that and mm -hmm. wanted to uh because yeah. they were also serving their patient exactly yep. and at that point we were all on the same team Abs still absolutely and and to to continue to be on the same team we said okay you're right here's what we can do to make sure that we all stay on the same team i'm sorry about those two pieces of loss for yeah. you i yeah. want to fulfill that for you right um yeah. and yep. then it's like nope right so continuous self victimization, yep. and then that, then what you're really saying is it gets to the point of self serving, yep. no longer serving the patient, correct? Not acknowledging the value that they had acquired in yep. all of the other items. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not going to go down that road anymore. Yeah, like yep. I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to let you serve yourself yep. through my pocketbook and to shit on my vet. No, exactly. I'm done with that. Yeah, and that's where we stand right between the caregivers and the veterinarian in those exact scenarios. Yeah, because they're you know the veterinarians are always already doing their jobs. The technicians are already doing their jobs. You know the CSS, MSS, everyone's still doing their jobs. You know, and it's almost even better to kind of exclude them a bit in that process mm -hmm. so that you know they don't get caught up in it and maybe their judgment if they are really scared they don't have that judgment kind of throw or twist sort of the outcome of it mm -hmm. um and you know in the end um you know it can like you said it can continue to edify the team edify the process edify all of the great things that were done you're not devaluing the good things that were done right um and let's let's kind of kind of go on on the other side so um we have a uh, this is now kind of going on to um the next example mm -hmm. was a patient that had come down um, for uh, seizures. This was uh, just again within the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And um, the caregiver was a very analytical individual, um, but you could tell had probably some um, limited experience uh, with maybe medical records or understanding physiology, at least in some capacity. Um, and what this individual had sort of uh, attached onto was that um, during the physical examination process on this seizure patient, um, our doctor had determined that um, the dog had like a, mile, a little bit of debris in each of the ears, right? So okay. it was just like, oh, you know, we might need to address an ear infection at some point in time, but you know mm -hmm. what, you're here for seizures, like we should probably continue to talk about this. Yes. So uh, went through the process between diagnostics and treatments and meds to go home. Um, you know, some antibiotics were started and so on and so forth, oral antibiotics. And um, then a complaint had come through from the caregiver in saying, um, you guys never treated my dog's um, uh, internal ear infection. So the guy was thinking it was otitis interna, um, which is an inner ear infection, whereas your outer ear infections is otitis externa. Mm -hmm. So the veterinarian in our facility had made a comment that there was some debris in the ears, which may predispose to an outer ear infection at some time. But how that miscommunication went back to the caregiver was he was like, oh, my dog must have an inner ear infection. That's why we're having seizures. Mm -hmm. So he's jumping online, going mm -hmm. on the internet, self-educating. Now remember, right. that's my favorite right. caregiver. Yes, yeah. that's still, we're still on positive. Yeah. Yes, still positive. Right. Like I heard something that wasn't right. I want to know why the hell my dog is having seizures. Da, 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 da. Here's mm -hmm. what I found. Mm -hmm. um, and when that complaint had come through, now the guy was really geared up. He was really upset. Yeah. But my, the dog's inner ear infection is not being treated. That's why he's having seizures escalating, escalating, escalating in tone. And the, the, it came through. Uh, uh, our One of our techs picked up the call. Um, the thing got sent to me i started my process um i called the referring veterinarian and you know said hey um you know this individual um you know some of the complaints you know because when you when you field enough complaints over the years you start to kind of pick out which ones are like oh that actually logically sounds valid and like wait a second why are we talking about red dye 40 you know, okay, you know, so it's like, you know, so anyway, so it's like, you know, you you, you kind of start to field out the portions that are worth addressing, or the ones that are worth addressing, the ones that aren't worth addressing, right? You know, so I'm kind of looking at it, and I'm just like, eh, this guy might be a little off. Um, so I call the referring vet, and I just, hey, you know, what do you think about our care? Do you think our care was off point? Do you think we're at fault for this? Um, I have no indication in the medical record of an internal ear infection. I have no clinical symptoms with that. I said, you know, did you recheck this patient? Did you see? And it was 
basically to the extent of like, oh yeah, this guy's kind of quirky and you know, I got to deal with him all the time. And you know, so you could tell that they probably had some conflict at some point in time. Um, a couple of days had gone by just, you know, uh, administratively and so on and so forth. So I finally got down to the clinic. I was, we kind of played phone tag a little bit and ended up calling the guy and, uh, you know, I was just going through my process um, at, you know, usually we, we send um, written judgments yeah. um, yep. in this particular circumstance. It just made more sense because it was very time sensitive, yeah. um, you know, where it was, we had like a day to a day and a half. If this was a problem, who a patient who had those problems, like by all means, yes, we got to get this handled quickly. Mm -hmm. We don't have time for a written response. Mm -hmm. So I call him back and I'm just like, Hey, what's going on? You know? And I, I just want to communicate kind of about, you know, the uh, complaint you know, that we had earlier this week. Um, you know, and he just starts kind of going off and he's like, well, you know about the inner infection. I'm like, hold on a second here. I said, I want to make sure that we're talking about the same thing. Mm -hmm. I said, because we're talking about the veterinarian making comment of outer ear debris and potential ear infection. I said, there's no indication of an inner ear infection here at all. I said, so my concern is that might actually be a point that was either misunderstood or miscommunicated. And he was like, oh, and it was like, uh, oh, okay, all right, so how's your patient doing? Ah, you know, he's, he's still a little off, but, you know, I haven't had additional seizures. Um, he said, I actually had a recheck appointment today with my veterinarian, um, and I got a call from the support staff at the veterinary clinic, and the veterinarian said he would no longer see any of my animals. And I was like, weird. He says, yeah, the other vet in the, he said, the other vet in the practice can deal with him now. And I was just like, all right, well, where's this, where, where did this come from? The guy's quirky. He did get upset with our staff, which I mean, I'd allow some emotion. We were talking about getting to your second emotion, right? Yep. You kind of have your first emotion, get to your second emotion. And I was just like, oh yeah, that's kind of weird. I said, I don't have any idea with that. Um, you know, so we start talking and we kind of go through, you know, some of these other medical points or whatever. Um, and he's like, you know what? He's like, I really appreciate you reaching back out to me. He says, um, the first time I called you guys, I just, I was pretty upset um, at that time. And I, I really am sorry for losing my temper. And if you could pass that along to the staff, he said, you know, he says, we're about an hour and a half away from you guys. He's like, I got a bunch of hunting dogs. He says, you know, if I'm going to, if I'm going to continue to have kind of these, this kind of this issues with my vet, he's like, I might just start driving down to you guys for wellness care. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, well, that's, you know, I'm sure there's a vet between here and there. You know, yeah. I'm like, you can uh, certainly, you know, we're here 24 seven, we'd be more than happy to, ha to help you any way that we can. Um, and, you know, at that time, there really wasn't any opportunity for us on a, on a case judgment to offer anything back, you no. know, to say like, oh, we're going to give you, you know, your money back. But you clarified everything. Yeah, we clarified everything. We just took the time to clarify it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's another good second example of mm -hmm. when we start to have these sort of reactive processes on how these things can sort of, out, you know, have a have an outcome is we still have the same process. It was objectively move through this case, talk to the referring vet, talk to our vets, mm -hmm. look at the medical record, look at informed consent and start to bundle this together on, did we miss something? How can we serve the patient? If there was something done wrong, what is the solution and how can we implement it? Mm -hmm. And at this point it was simply a miscommunication. Right. You know, well, and, and in that miscommunication, again, going back to the idea that we're all on the same team, we're all here correct. to serve the patient. What happened in that miscommunication was a significant lack of trust. Yes. So what you did in that conversation yes. was you reestablished trust by yes. saying this was never a concern i apologize for the miscommunication yes. but there's nothing in here that says that that symptom exists yes yes right like what right. like is there anything else yeah like because i feel like we yep. just crossed the bridge yeah and and coming into that conversation because the note that i got back from our support staff you know caregivers mad and blah 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 oh, right you know is that i started out by mm -hmm. respecting him. Right. And saying, you know right. what? And, and he's, oh, I really, you know, I feel, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to lose my temper before. And I said, listen, man, I said, I get it. You got a sick dog. Mm -hmm. It's seizures, which no one really likes to see those ever. They're no. pretty terrible. They never really mean great things in older dogs. Regardless of species, <laughs> actually. No <laughs> yes. one likes to see them people either. <laughs> no, but sure. yes, in, pretty in, terrible. in yeah. all and, of them, it is not fun species, to deal with. species, yes. So, um, you know, so then it, it comes down to, you know, and it's just, it's meeting on that same level, you know, playing field. And that's again, what it came back to is like, no, this individual is a part of our care team. Mm -hmm. It would be no different as a caregiver being a part of our care team as if it was like a CVT, a CVT or an LVT or someone coming in and saying, and that's where from a proactive process, we have an, you know, a CVT who is equally as upset about something that had happened with a patient. There is no reason why we would value a caregiver over a, you know, a technician, a caregiver over a veterinarian, a veterinarian over a CSS, an MSS over a caregiver is it's an equal playing field across the board when we're talking about case reviews. Right. Everyone is object, uh, everyone is accountable. And in order for us to maintain accountability, 
community, it's that. We have to trust, we have to have mm -hmm. the respect, and we have to have the unity in the team. Right. And that's, I think, two really great examples of how a you know sort of reactive and proactive process, however the complaint gets to you, whether you know see something, say something, or a caregiver complaint comes through, it's that you don't always know how those end, mm -hmm. but if you maintain absolute objectivity the whole time, you do nothing but strengthen your team. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Because because what you're essentially doing is you're saying ultimately we need to be accountable to each other and accountable to the patient. Absolutely. Which is top. Yeah. Your, that's what this whole thing is. Yes. And as long as we're willing to do that, most of the time, all the other pieces come around with it. They do. Uh, yeah. Yep. You just have to be willing to work in that, in mm -hmm. that, in that accountability thing and really looking at the assigning accountability and case reviews are a perfect opportunity to do mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what then leads us into the after action review, right. uh, yeah. which of course is going to be our next. It's segment. our next one. Yeah. 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 But so the difference here is, okay, so those are kind of two good examples. Uh, one that ended well, one that ended unfortunate for that individual who continued to victimize. But the, um, when we start to look at then um, how the after action report is, is we or after action review um, is again, the after action report is kind of a tool for communication to facilitate conflict resolution um, and, and uh, when we start to look at how a case review comes out now again if you guys look at your creating accountability um, uh, diagram or PDF um, is that the case review is really more so just between the chief clinical officer and the senior accountability officer um, but it's a matter of identifying opportunities for growth primarily within an individual right. now sometimes you come across a few things that it ends up becoming a team thing like well mm -hmm. the team really failed this one mm -hmm. but what happens when you go from a case review to an after action review is what oh <laughs> blame <laughs> yes Finger literally pointing. this happens yes yes it's, don't talk to me about this why are you coming at me for this thing i'm not the one who did it she is or he is or you know this staff and it wasn't me mm -hmm. is as soon as we have in one of these case reviews where we drop into the lower part of this unaccountability this unaccountability ladder okay I'm going to sit here and listen to all the people that you are about to blame in mm -hmm. us identifying you. There's a learning opportunity here. Mm -hmm. You're exactly right. There may be an opportunity for multiple people to learn from this, but we are talking to you right now about this. Mm -hmm. There's no reason why I'm not going to go talk to someone else. In fact, I may have already talked to them about this. However, mm -hmm. because it is him and her and nope and this and this, okay, I'm going to listen. I'm going to make my note. All those people are going to be at the after action review. Right. Because we need to come together to this on a team mm -hmm. level. Because if you are then saying these other people are to blame when we just put six hours into figuring out that it was you that we needed to have as a learning opportunity, mm -hmm. maybe we did miss the mark. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe we missed the mark in saying, you know what, we are looking at this without all of the criteria, which we should have identified in our case review process. Mm -hmm. um, but that's then leading us into our after action report. Right. Yep. That's a, it's an interest. It's, it's a, it's a tough fork in the road again, like both of these. So like the caregiver that doesn't accept the judgment, right? Yes. Tough fork in the road. Yep. What that is, is you're going to have to have some gumption yep. to say, okay, then I think we're done here. Yes. <laughs> yep. Right, that, like no yep. one wants to end the period yep. or put the period at the end of that sentence, yeah, because that's that's hard, yep, like it's hard to put that down mm -hmm. because you're gonna piss that person off, yep, you're gonna have somebody that's upset, yeah. Yeah. and so I love that idea of just understanding like you're gonna hit a point with these judgments where it's yep. like we're gonna go left or we're gonna go right, but we're not gonna continue down this road, yeah, no, there's no, no more in no. between here, no, and that's the rules of engagement, yes, you know, is that we've basically said we are going to protect ourselves mm -hmm. by not allowing. Um, sort of the, the the verbal abuse, right? You know, so we've got that side, yep. and, and again, most of the time, and not even all the time, but most of the time, those are with our case review processes. But then, when we are in that case review process and we're fact finding with yeah. our vets or somebody that's on our team, and yeah. then this happens yeah. where they start to make the excuses or or just start to point the problem elsewhere, yes. right? Yes. It's like, okay, you know, yeah, stop, right? Literally, why we yeah. have these, right? Yep. In that, like, we're just going to find all the facts. Yep. And it sounds like we're not going to be able to get all of those facts from you because if you're going to say that it was somebody else's fault, I want to get their take on it also. Yes. Same as if a caregiver says yep. it's all your fault, I'm going to give that person just as much of a yep. benefit to state their piece. Yes. And we're going to do it as a team yep. because we're going to look at each other and say, you know what? If I believe you're a part of this problem, I want you to grow. Right. And right. I want, and I want to grow as well. Right. And the, 
holy crap yeah. you want to talk about create unity yeah that is the ultimate way to do it because yeah. you're going to have some hard conversations and yeah. you're going to learn how to communicate in an accountable way mm-hmm. and when you have the, I, I, that's that's the after action review and i'm you know as my yeah. my preface like it was sourced from the united states marines right uh and like any time uh positive or negative if there's an engagement with the enemy, they go through an after action review yep. and, and just like, what did, what happened? What can we do? And we'll walk through the whole thing, but what happened and what, what went well, what could we, what we can, what can we do better? Right. And like, man, when you have that, uh, Jocko Willink is yep. probably the best guy to talk about that. His book, extreme ownership is that entire thing. Like yep. how do I stand up in the middle of the room of my peers yep. and own the problem? Yep. Right, because oh, yeah. as soon as you do that, yeah. accountability, unity, trust, like because yeah. that's now the guy that I trust because he's gonna take the bullet yep. when it's flying at us, right? Like literally in right. that context, right? Yeah, in that context, and it's it's terribly uncomfortable, right? But you know? that generates but then, so much respect too, yeah. and like I li- like I know yeah. that I use these words a lot, and I'm looking at the sheet, but like man, trust, respect, unity, mm-hmm. and accountability. Yep. If you do that in the room. Now you have a set of people on a yep. team that can now communicate that, yep. and we have these specific modules that provide us the mechanism to have these conversations in a controlled way yep. so that when we have to have those short ones mm-hmm. or even working our way now that we're at within yep. the moment, all yep. I got to do is say six words. Yep. All I got to do is all I got to do is say serve the patient. Yep. All I have to say, yeah. my words are just off yeah, right it's now. Fine. Yeah. Serve the patient, yeah. educate the caregiver. Yep. As soon as that happens, we're right back in the middle. Oh, absolutely. We're right back to the core mm-hmm. of, of being accountable, creating unity, respecting each other and 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 giving and gaining trust to one another because if you're able to serve the patient educate the caregiver you're able to do all four of those things yeah absolutely so yep. case yep. review that's that's the nuts and bolts of it uh what we'll do too is we'll put the link to um the the case review process that we have yeah. written out yeah i'm probably going to just get all of this into one downloadable yeah. pdf i think we have the individual pieces up but i'll just get it all down into one because the cool part about it is is it's scalable like you can uh-huh. you can read it off the piece of paper yeah, yeah. and run it yeah um you know if 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 you don't have the 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 medical record processes yeah. in place um uh, you know, this will develop them. This will develop them because yeah. you're going to find some big holes. Yeah, and it's gonna you're just gonna yeah. find the yeah. some solutions and some problems yeah. real fast. And that that might actually be something worth exploring at a later time. Is you know how we practice in our clinic informed consent medicine. Mm-hmm. You know, for us, it has nothing to do with judging a book by its cover or making decisions on how people want to treat their patients or anything of that regard. It's just saying, nope, you're coming in with this problem. Here's all the options for you. How can we fall? Are you more of a caregiver that leans heavy on diagnostics are you a caregiver who leans heavy on treatments or are you somewhere in between Mm -hmm. same thing with veterinarians i refer to those as diagnosticians and clinicians is that you'll kind of sway between i don't know how to get the answer unless i run all these tests or none of those tests matter because these are the only drugs we're going to use you know so you kind of bounce between those but like i said maybe something worth exploring at a later time and just saying how we how we actually like nuts and bolts track um sort of informed consent Mm -hmm. in our practice Mm -hmm. um uh, because it is between the um the computer systems and um we actually have different time trackers time stamps uh, so when we get complaints regarding i was there for five hours it's like actually been here for 90 minutes you know and they're they're like ah it's well it was five hours from me left the house and went to the grocery store and then had to come back and get the dog and then come here. It's like, yeah, your day took five hours, but you were here for an hour. So there are different ways in which you can be, and I think our process is very pure in the sense that, um, you know, if you don't have that sort of um, high specificity in your medical record system, um, a case review process um, done over a year or two, you'll create it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You have to. You have to. Because otherwise what ends up, it's either that or you have to take the caregiver's word for it. Yes. Shit on your veterinarian, lose your pocketbook, go backwards. <laughs> right. 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 And that's exactly what we, we don't want to do. We don't yeah. want to do yeah. that because that yeah. destroys your culture. You, yeah. it, it, everything yeah. goes backwards, spirals mm-hmm. downward, however you want to yeah. think about what it. What is it? 
inefficient process yeah. and unnecessary um, conflicts. Yes, absolutely. You know? and, th and that's the thing, I mean, because we have such a pure medical record system, we can actually field most of our complaints without actually even talking to the veterinarian mm -hmm. or the technician. Now, again, we do if we have to fact find, but because yes. we have all these different pieces linked together, it's we just take it literally as if it was, I'm suing you, your medical record is gonna go to a lawyer and now they're going to interpret it. They're not going to have the context of conversation. Right. It's the same way with us, yep. is that if, again, if it's not in the medical record it didn't happen if yep. you know we don't have way of tracking it it never occurred um but um but and yeah when the day comes that a doctor or a staff person starts blaming other people <laughs> right. not to, again like mo there may be multiple problems to solve yes but we're yeah. just gonna go to the other process that just continues to solve problems yes yes so yeah, so, yeah that'll be our next episode and next next week we're gonna dive into the after action reviews uh kind of the the, the logistics of how those work uh because that that gets a little bit more intense we're talking about uh other you know uncontrolled uh communication between yeah. two team members yeah uh, there's 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 definitely some things that you have to do very specifically within those but we'll get more into the details of that next week yep uh thanks for thanks for yeah, tuning yeah, in we hope that you guys enjoyed it some some fun examples in there yeah, and yeah. uh yeah we'll see y'all next week yeah, see you next week <laughs>